Welcome back, I am the Executioner, and today we're going to talk in more detail about the Kyle Rittenhouse trial and its verdict. So, according to CNN, Kyle Rittenhouse was found not guilty on all charges. So, who is Kyle Rittenhouse? Kyle Rittenhouse, at the time, was 17 years of age. He had gone to Wisconsin, Kenosha, Wisconsin, uh, with a couple friends who were in a militia, and basically they were there to clean up graffiti, uh, administer aid, and protect the gas station. So... The media is claiming he crossed state lines with an illegal weapon. No, that's not the case. The weapon was stored in Wisconsin, and that part of the story is often ignored. The gun being stored in Wisconsin means that Wisconsin law applies to that firearm, not Illinois law. So Kyle Rittenhouse is a teenager from Antioch, Illinois. He spends partially his time working in Kenosha and sometimes lives with his father in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And this all happened because of the unrest uh, due to Jacob Blake. So Jacob Blake was an African-American man who was shot by police. He was paralyzed and this created a lot of unrest in the city of Kenosha, Wisconsin. So during that time, there were a lot of riots there had been protests, but what overshadowed it was the riots. You can see uh, car lots. You can see businesses being absolutely burned to the ground. And Kyle could not stand by and watch this. So on the third day of the riots, he actually went with a couple of his friends to go and clean up graffiti and protect a local gas station. Well, there were multiple individuals and a crowd of hundreds that... A person named Joseph Rosenbaum comes into the picture. Now, Rosenbaum had threatened uh, Kyle and his friends multiple times that night when the uh, shooting took place, and Kyle was caught off guard. Now, Rosenbaum had threatened to kill Kyle Rittenhouse along with his friends and said a very uh, not-so-YouTube-friendly word, I can't say it here, but I can say it in the context of what the prosecutor's name is. Shoot me, Binga, shoot me. You can obviously see where Binga is. So, Rosenbaum said that, and he had caught Kyle later on in the night alone. And Rosenbaum, he was a convicted child rapist, very mentally ill, admitted for a suicide attempt earlier that night, but let go. I can't possibly imagine why any competent doctor would let a suicidal person back on the streets. But Rosenbaum was going after various people, he was saying threats, and he then chased after Kyle through a parking lot and tried grabbing Kyle's gun. Now, word of advice, you shouldn't try to grab someone's gun if they're carrying. One, because it's an idiot move. Two, you're unarmed. And three, if you value your life, you should probably never initiate a confrontation. So Rosenbaum tries grabbing Kyle's gun. So Kyle shoots him four times. Kyle had tried to deter Rosenbaum by raising his gun up at Rosenbaum so he would stop, maybe reconsider, and run away. Well, Rosenbaum was not deterred. And he caught Kyle in a very vicarious position where he was between two cars, Kyle, and he tried grabbing Kyle's gun and getting it away from him. Now, you can imagine trying to grab someone's gun away from an individual is definitely cause for concern since that weapon can be used against you. So Kyle shoots Rosenbaum four times and Rosenbaum dies and a crowd of people start circling around Kyle. Kyle actually does the responsible thing and goes towards police lines to try to turn himself in. Well, the crowd was having none of that, and they were chasing after him. Now, there was the two individuals in question now, uh, Gage Groschwitz and a person named Aubrey, I believe. So, Aubrey and this other individual start chasing Rittenhouse. So, Aubrey has a skateboard, and he tries breaking this kid's head in. Alright? So, Gage also is armed. He has a pistol, so he pulls out a pistol and tries to chase after Kyle Rittenhouse. This is not told in the media. Now, the media is saying that, oh, he thought that Kyle was an active shooter. Well, the problem with this narrative is, why would you run towards an active shooter? Why? 
it makes no sense. Wouldn't you want to get away from that threat? Why would you want to confront that threat? Now, Gage was a prohibited person. What is a prohibited person? Under the Gun Control Act of 1968, felons cannot own firearms. That is illegal. In some states, you can get a permit that sort of allows you to own firearms, but Grosswitz, in this case, had been in trouble for burglary in the past, and his CCW had expired as a result of his felonous record. So... One would try to reason that a person with a criminal record shouldn't have been carrying a firearm. And that a person carrying a firearm with a criminal record, that one would be hard-pressed to argue that that individual is trying to stop an active threat. So Groschwitz chases after Kyle Rittenhouse, along with this Aubrey, Auburn guy. So Auburn tries cracking Kyle's head open. That doesn't go good. Kyle shoots and kills this Aubrey Auburn. So what happens next is Gage Gage puts his hands up, faking to surrender. So Gage pretends to try to surrender, right? And he puts his hands up. But as Kyle's lowering his weapon in response, Gage pulls out his handgun and proceeds to aim it at Kyle Rittenhouse. Now, it wasn't like he was pointing it towards the ground. It wasn't like he was doing any of that. He was actively pointing the muzzle directly at Kyle Rittenhouse and later tweets confirmed that he had the intent to kill Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle Rittenhouse fires in self-defense and his arm is eviscerated. His uh, bicep is just torn off from the 223 bullet. So Kyle then tries to run towards police lines. He basically said to them, look, I was involved in a self-defense shooting. Um, I'm here to turn myself in. And what did the cops do? They didn't do anything at all. And it took until he went back to Antioch, Illinois to turn himself in that police finally admitted him in. So at every time, turn Kyle had tried to do the right thing by uh, turning himself over to police now if he was an active shooter right if he was an active shooter and he just wanted to go out and kill people why would he turn himself in it makes no sense and even then if Kyle was an active shooter a mass shooter wouldn't it have made more sense for him to kill people at the gas station wouldn't it have made more sense to uh, shoot at people who are gathering on mass compared to this one individual, Joseph Rosenbaum, and the two people in the crowd that ran towards him? Wouldn't it make more sense if he had shot them at the gas station? See, this isn't what the media talks about. What they are talking about is absolute lies about this situation. So, Kyle Rittenhouse, he was found not guilty, obviously, because the video shows clear self-defense. And everybody who had been covering this story from the absolute beginning, searching for the videos, searching for these people's criminal records, etc., doing independent research, had come to the conclusion this kid was innocent. Yet, he was charged for murder. Yet, the videos out there clearly showed self-defense and... Frankly, that's a wrongful arrest right there. If you could prove it was self-defense before this ever got to trial, he shouldn't have been charged. What we're covering. Kyle Rittenhouse, the teenager accused of killing two people and shooting another during unrest in Kenosha, Wisconsin, last summer has been found not guilty on all charges. The 12-person jury deliberated for more than 25 hours over the course of four days. Rittenhouse, now 18, was charged with five felonies. Yes, he was charged with five felonies. Uh, reckless public endangerment, I believe first-degree murder, uh, weapons possession, etc. Now, weapons possession, that was thrown out due to the fact that in Wisconsin law, if it's an oversight or not, it's not illegal to carry a rifle if you're under 18, Uh the only way it could be illegal if it was a short barrel shotgun or short barrel rifle. That's the only way you could possibly consider it illegal. And the judge threw that out as a result. So 
Anthony Huber, one of the men who was shot by Kyle Rittenhouse during civil unrest in uh, Kenosha last summer, defended her nephew's actions prior to his death. I am firmly in the camp that he perceived an active shooter and he went to disarm that person, Susan Hughes said. That is the Anthony I knew. He was very much a person who would jump into action. He, yes, you knew him, and you would definitely know his criminal record where he kidnapped somebody and strangled them. That, that's Anthony Huber. He was convicted on that. And it's very surprising you would still defend his actions. According to a criminal... Complaint, Huber reached for Rittenhouse's gun with his hands while holding the skateboard in the other. Okay, here's the thing, though. If somebody shoots another individual, right, and it is an active shooter, right, why would you chase after the... Now, some would say heroics, but the problem with that, however, is you're running, like, 80 feet from where it happened. If it were, like, 20 feet, maybe 10 feet away... And you thought, okay, maybe I have a chance, then that makes sense. But if it's, if you are gaining on this person, if this person is already a good distance away, why in your right mind would you think it was uh, poignant to run towards that active shooter? Quote, there were a couple of other people who did the same thing. He said, nobody was successful. He lost his life. I was asked the other day by one of the media people if I thought Anthony would do the same thing again, and I think he would. Yes, chasing after an individual that just defended themselves to try to kill them. That's clear on the, on the video where people said, oh, we're going to cranium him. Even though all those individuals in question were in proximity of where the event happened. There was a crowd, there was that. They must have been like, I don't know, 30 feet away. They must have saw what gone down. But no, they, instead of running in the other direction, running for help, they decided to run towards a person with a firearm. Rittenhouse was acquitted Friday of first-degree intentional homicide and four other felony charges. Rittenhouse attorney, Kyle said, if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't do it. And that's directly from a person. Th this is the thing. People mischaracterize self-defense. That... People would be proud of sense. Well, many individuals aren't proud of self-defense. It's just something they had to do to survive. And what Kyle said really shows some uh, integrity here. That he wasn't seeking a fight. Carrying a firearm is not seeking a fight, for example. So when asked on it, he said, I wouldn't have gone there. However, that does not diminish your right to have a weapon. That does not diminish your right to defend yourself. For example, if I'm driving a car, right, and I have insurance and I get into an accident, it doesn't mean that I wanted to get into an accident. It just means something happened and the insurance took care of it. A firearm is like that in many ways. No one seeks a fight with a firearm. However, it's a tool that can help you in a situation if your life is in danger. When asked if Rittenhouse wished he had not gone out that night and if he thinks he did anything wrong Richardson said Kyle said if I had to do it all over again and had any idea if something like this could happen I wouldn't do it I want to be clear this is not regret for what he did that night under those circumstances he added does he think he did anything wrong CNN asked legally no Richard replied as for morally quote he wishes he didn't have to do it and that's the thing about self-defense people ignore, is that nobody wants to kill somebody. Nobody wants to. However, with these circumstances, he had to do what he had to do to survive. And that's the story of many people who have had to use firearms in self-defense. Uh, be it in burglaries or out on the street, etc. This is a story that's all too common. Especially the prosecution's mishandling of this. That's why USCCA is a good organization. They actually help out with the legal costs, and they're pretty good people. Rittenhouse to Fox News. Quote, the jury reached the correct verdict. And they absolutely did. Despite the prosecution bungling this at every moment, despite the police bungling this at every moment with violations and corruptions, the jury came to the correct decision, saw the evidence, and anyone with 
a pair of eyeballs can see that with self-defense. The only people that can think this is not self-defense are people who have been lied to or are deliberately lying themselves. After Kyle Rittenhouse was acquitted Friday of first-degree intentional homicide and four other felony charges, he said he believed the jury reached the correct verdict. Quote, the jury reached the correct verdict. Self-defense is not illegal. I believe they came to the correct verdict, and I'm glad that everything went well. Rittenhouse said in a promotional trailer for a Tucker Carlson program. Rittenhouse was riding in the back of a vehicle and appeared to be wearing the same outfit he had on as the verdict was read. Quote, it's been a rough journey, but we've made it through it. We made it through the hard part, he said. End quote. Yeah, this, this young man had his life absolutely ruined when they shouldn't have went to trial. It should have just, the charges should have been dropped. No charges should have been brought against him because the video evidence just overwhelmingly shows this was self-defense. And what the media put this young man through reminds me of that uh, young boy who, uh, who was accosted over smirking when uh, a Native American veteran had uh, come up to him with a drum. And this was absolutely the same thing. Uh, Biden went online saying that uh, Kyle Rittenhouse was a white supremacist. And the media characterized him as such, as a proud boy, as a mass killer, etc. When that wasn't the case. This is huge grounds for defamation lawsuits and definitely slander. Because this... This, if he does not act legally, it could totally ruin his life outside of what they put him through, through uh, this legal process. Rittenhouse attorney, I did not approve of Tucker Carlson crew embedded with the defense team. Mark Richards, an attorney for Kyle Rittenhouse, said on Friday he did not approve of the Fox film crew that was embedded with the defense team during the trial. Quote, I threw them out of the room several times, Richard told CNN. I don't think a film crew is, an appro is appropriate for something like this, end quote. But people who are raising the money to pay for the experts and to pay for the attorney were trying to raise money, Richard asked, added. I don't want to say an evil, but a definite distraction was part of it, and I didn't approve of it, but I'm not always the boss, end quote. If I was Kyle Rittenhouse in this situation, right, definite self-defense, definitely acquitted, right, I would not be out there doing interviews with MSNBC, CNN, or any of those news sources. I don't necessarily think Fox is a bad thing to go on an interview about. I think Kyle needs to get his story out there. But I think that the correct organizations to definitely speak through are USCCA, Gun Owners of America, etc. Not the NRA, not any of those hack groups, right? Firearms Policy Coalition, definitely. Okay. Gun Owners of America, okay. Great. Fox, maybe. But I think Kyle needs to tell his story in a way that's positive for everybody, not trying to cash in on it, not trying to do any of that, right? If I was him in that position, I would not be doing interviews. I would just be just keeping to myself because there's no need for media. There's no need for any of that. However, I am not Kyle Rittenhouse. So I think it's important for him to get his story out there, but in a mature, consistent way that is that is positively constructive for everyone involved here. Uh, not only was Kyle Rittenhouse on trial, it was our right to self-defense. It's our right to carry a firearm and defend ourselves. If this had gone the other way, our right to self-defense would have been eroded the second that verdict was given. Binger just did not know what self-defense was. Any of those jackheads didn't know what self-defense was whatsoever. And that's the problem with this country. We are not educated on self-defense. We are not educated on civics whatsoever. We are not educated on any of this. And it's very sad to see people on Twitter, uh, the media, etc. just buying into this narrative. And it's very sad because people don't even know how our court system works. Innocent until proven guilty. Yet 
when people are unhappy with a verdict, they'll assume the opposite. The thing is, courts are not supposed to be political in any way, and I think Schroeder handled this very appropriately. He had to act as a defense and a judge, because the prosecutor was pulling out all the corrupt stops to try to get Rittenhouse convicted. And a judge who would allow that is not a competent judge. In any case, if this had been a murderer, if this had been, I don't know, a person who was actually guilty, they deserve the same due process as someone who is innocent. That's our legal system. That's how it should work. But yeah, I think Kyle should get his story out there, but it has to be in a way that is good. Not cashing in. Not any of that. He is not Zimmerman. He is not any of that. So the media should not try to set him up to be a Zimmerman. Attorney says Rittenhouse verdict is deeply troubling. Lee Merritt, an attorney for Ahmed Arby's mother, Wanda Cooper Jones, told CNN Friday that the not guilty verdict handed down in the case of Kyle Rittenhouse, the teenager who killed two people and shot another during unwear, unrest in Kenosha, Wisconsin, was deeply troubling, very scary. For Arby's family, as statements are expected Monday in the trial of three white men charged in killing Arby's killing. Quote, it is so similar. The Kyle Rittenhouse case was a case about vigilantism. This case is a case about vigilantism, and I'm hoping the jury doesn't take the same course as the Rittenhouse trial, Merritt said. End quote. The problem, however, is Ahmed Arby, right? He was killed in cold blood. He was killed by two individuals who just had no business being there, right? That's what that happened, right? That was direct murder. You can prove that. However, with Kyle Rittenhouse, that was total self-defense. The two individuals, the three individuals in question that killed Achman Arby, right? Those people, that was direct murder. That, was, that wasn't even self-defense whatsoever. Yet, they're trying to make a false equivocation with the Rittenhouse trial. Rittenhouse was acquitted Friday of first-degree intentional homicide for other charges. Merritt said the U.S. justice system historically doesn't work well when assailants are white and we play the white game it's funny because there's a story out not even yesterday about a black man who defended himself against police an unwarranted raid for example and he was acquitted on that not necessarily on the weapons charge but he was acquitted the fact of the matter is you're right the self-defense doesn't matter if you're black asian white whatever you have the same right to what Kyle did if you're black, white, purple. Doesn't matter. Your inherent right to self-defense is colorblind. And the fact that this attorney, Lee Merritt, tries to equivocate these cases is just totally dishonest. There's a long history of racism that exists within our courts. It's a reality, Merritt said. It's a statistical reality that we see playing itself out. Has there been racism in our court systems? Yes. However, in this case, the Kyle Rittenhouse case, that does not apply. The killers of Ahmed Arby should be found guilty. However, it is a greater crime to equivocate these two cases when they have nothing to do with each other whatsoever, outside of the skin colors of the defendants. That, in my opinion, is true racism. Here's what the jury verdict sheets in the Kyle Rittenhouse show. Here's what the jury sh verdict sheets in the trial Rittenhouse show. Kyle Rittenhouse, the teenager who killed two people and shot another during unrest in Kenosha, Wisconsin, was acquitted Friday of first-degree intentional homicide and other felony charges. Jury verdict sheets from the trial appear to give some insight into the process of the jury's deliberation. The sheets were filled with Kenosha County Clerk of the Circuit Court. They showed that the preceding jury in the case signed only two of the not guilty verdicts today. The other three not guilties were dated Wednesday and Thursday. Juror 54, the presiding juror in the case, signed the not guilty verdict sheets for counts one and two today. Rittenhouse faced the charge of a first degree reckless homicide for fatally shooting Joseph Rosenbaum. And count one, count two stated that 
Rittenhouse had recklessly endangered the safety of Richard McGinnis, who was near Rittenhouse during the first shooting. The presiding jury in the case signed a not guilty verdict sheet for count five on Thursday. Rittenhouse was charged in count five with intentional first degree intentional homicide for shooting Gage Groschwitz. Jury 54 signed the not guilty verdict for county for counts three and four on Wednesday. Count four, the most severe charge Rittenhouse faced was first degree intentional homicide for the fatal shooting of Anthony Huber. Rittenhouse was charged in count three with the first degree reckless endangering of the safety of an unknown man. The 12th person jury deliberated for more than 24, 25 hours over the course of four days. Jacob Blake's uncle. What was done today was heinous. Following the verdict of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, Justin Blake, the uncle of Jacob Blake, said what was done here was heinous, end quote. Rittenhouse, the teenager who killed two people and shot another during the unrest in Kenosha, was acquitted Friday of first-degree intentional homicide and four other felony charges. Blake also discussed his nephew's case, saying his demands the case be reopened. We're demanding that Jacob Blake's case be reopened, he said. Remember, a white officer shot a 29-year-old black man seven times while responding to a domestic incident August 23, 2020. Blake survived the shooting but was left paralyzed from the waist down. His shooting sparked unrest in Kenosha. Well, I just want to go over some of the articles by CNN and how the media has totally bungled this thing up. Uh, my support goes to Kyle Rittenhouse. I think that the trouble is over, and I hope he has a great life, uh, a great future ahead of him, and I believe he did nothing wrong. He just acted in self-defense. I'll link down below the videos in question that show self-defense, and I think that the jury proved without a matter of doubt that this indeed was self-defense. Anyways, if you like my video, please subscribe and like the video. Please, if you like my video, please subscribe and like it. If you want to make sure you get all my videos, make sure to be notified by clicking the bell notification. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and remember to stay free.